So uh, today we want to look at Pierre Mondrian, one of the um, first pure abstract artists who started out as a, an artist who worked with landscape, uh, realism, and then evolved eventually into uh, his style as a pure abstract artist. This is the kind of work that you'd probably recognize as his work, uh, basically just horizontal and vertical lines, uh, rectangles and squares, and primary colors, yellow, red, and blue. So when he began though, he started out uh, as working with landscape, um, probably at the time of uh, Impressionism. And so his work, most likely Impressionism or Post-Impressionism, and so his work uh, was primarily, that we can see, is in landscape, and um, he's doing traditional, this would probably have been an outdoor sketch, plein air sketch where he did, uh, and he's capturing the sense of atmospheric perspective uh, and the feel of the landscape that he's observing. Here's one that looks almost like a, a, a Dutch, kind of sort of classical Dutch painting, uh, where he's using uh, very realistic uh, colors and a representational form, um, not very stylized. So again, this is what you would expect uh, from a, an early Impressionist painting. And then his work became a little bit more focused on on the rhythms within the landscape and the uh, principles and elements of design, you know, so focusing more on the design and expressive, expressive elements uh, within the landscape. And then I think he moved through into a post-impressionist style where he's beginning to flatten out the landscape to a certain extent and really uh, get a, a stronger focus on the abstract qualities, the, you know, sort of flat color spaces um, simplifying the shapes, you know, limiting the details, and focusing more on the design, design elements within the composition, the structural elements. Here you see one that kind of echoes his later work. Uh, you see on the landscape, and within the landscape, he's pulling out the things that um, have a strong sense of um, uh, line and rhythm and, and movement. So when you look in the background of this image and you see these uh, patterns of the roofs. Uh, again, they're simplified, the color is consistent, so it moves your eye through the composition. And then a similar pattern in the background of the church. Uh, again, it's a simple, um, <clears throat> almost a flat a violet, so it sinks back and pushes the other shapes forward. Then in the foreground, you have these very intricate uh, designs, um, these uh, patterns and, and sort of weaving <clears throat> limbs of the trees that begin to look like what his uh, later paintings would become. And, and that's focusing more on the rhythms and structures within uh, nature and the forms in nature itself. This is a close-up of that. Again, you can start to see, you know, the, sort of the linear aspect of it. Um, there's still some atmospheric perspective, it's still, you know, clearly recognizable forms and natural colors. And moving forward, he's uh, in this image, it becomes much more flattened, uh, particularly the house there. It really stands out that the house is really facing you in one point perspective. Um, the colors, you know, there's not as much um, shading and light and dark sense in the, within the forms. The, the face, space kind of flattens out to, to a large extent throughout the whole composition. He's, he's worrying more about, you know, linear movement. Um, shapes and contrasting tones, you know, so uh, far more focused on the, you know, flat uh, two-dimensional patterns and designs within this composition. Now here he has, again, a much more stylized um, rendering of this boat and this, this fisherman. And so he, and here he's actually, again, looking at the rhythms of the lines, you these lines um, creating a rhythm throughout the design, you know, um, the taking the forms and stylizing them into uh, hard light and dark, you know, so they're, the shapes take on a, a much more, you know, kind of concrete, solid sense of form. And <clears throat> they don't really have the softness I mean, I'd expect you would see in nature. So he's stylizing it. And I was also really focusing on uh, contrasting areas and colors. And so um, the underlying structure of the forms. <coughs> again okay now in this particular painting he's he's actually fo focusing more on the emotional uh, impact of nature 
And so, again, looking at um, this painting, it's, it's more of a romantic image. Uh, not a whole lot of detail. Um, simplifying the shapes, just focusing on the sense of uh, tone and uh, light quality within the composition. Then it was further towards, you know, abstraction by the, the shapes in this particular painting almost get lost. You know, he's, he's got light and dark spaces, but, you know, the, the sense that he's uh, doing something that is representational starts to become less apparent. He's looking more at the structure. So you have like these linear movements, um, the shapes, but again, the shapes are more abstract shapes and less about representing the forms in nature. And here we have uh, what it would be a sunset, but the colors are uh, very abstracted. Uh, it's monochromatic for the most part, just an orange to darker burnt orange and almost yellow in the lightest points. Um, and, and the shapes become simple rhythmic patterns across the design. So again, that kind of echoes the way he's going to go in the future, uh, where he's focusing more just on that idea of structure and rhythm uh, within a composition. And here, the landscape's becoming, again, it's the colors, uh, not really based on nature. It's based on a complementary color uh, scheme of violet and yellow. Uh, the shapes, again, the main focus here is focusing on pattern, you know, the, the pattern of uh, tree trunks across the design, and the uh, shapes in the sky, you know, so it's somewhere across between a Van Gogh and a, um, probably maybe, uh, I'm trying to think of another artist at the same time, post-impressionist, um, Gauguin, you know, so these, these um, are certainly becoming more expressive, but they're more expressive in the sense that he's becoming more about the structure and the patterns than and less about the actual trees themselves. And here, you get one of his later paintings where he's taking the tree, just the, the tree itself, and then looking at those same kind of patterns that were in his earlier work uh, within the branches and the negative spaces. And so uh, it's becoming more of less about the tree and more or less more about the abstract shapes that uh, are formed by the tree and those kind of spaces and rhythms that he creates. Here, the same tree, it looks like much more simplified, uh, starting to even stylize the lines. So again, it's not as much following the normal uh, linear movement of the branches and just becoming more um, of a stylized, structured, rhythmic pattern. Uh, it still is his own sense of energy and style. And again, it's becoming a little bit more about um, about his inner sense than it is about the tree itself. And as he begins to take that idea further, it becomes more about the underlying structure and pattern within the composition. You know, so um, the sort of idea that he has about how to break up the space, the amount of space to give between each line and shape, uh, and then uh, really simplifying um, color scheme as well. So it becomes more and more um, about pattern and, and less about what it was that he was getting the inspiration for the pattern from. And in the end, he, he ends up here, you know, with just horizontal and verticals, rectangles and squares, um, simple color scheme. And so that's, that's kind of the, the pattern that he took with his work. And in the end, he ended up eliminating most colors except for a, a um, color triad of the primary colors and white and black and black lines against white background with uh, colored rectangles and squares. And with that, he, he had a, a meaningful relationship in, in the paintings that um, were based on two rectangles for every square. So it gives a stability and a meaningful relationship within the parts that are pattern seeking brain or, or pattern seeking brain unconsciously recognized. So really what he was doing was, was he was trying to um, elaborate on, on what triggers our, our minds uh, and what makes us really um, respond to a, a painting. And so he honed it down to its, its most primal or primary uh, factors and eliminated everything else. So he was trying to get to a pure form of art that was more about um, his inner sense 
of organization and uh, composition and expression than you know trying to respond to something in nature. So again, again, it became more of a pure abstractionist in the end. So if you compare his painting um, with another modern artist, uh, somebody doing um, a scene design for an animated an animated movie, you see a similarity in the way that the uh, compositions are organized. You know, you have the verticals that are going across the painting, and then you have the space at the bottom, space on the side, space on the top, where there's you know patterns and shapes within those. So you see the same thing happening here, and it kind of opens up to the right. So you have the verticals, you got the shapes down here, space over here, you know, the little shapes that are kind of grabbing your attention through there, and this longer uh, space moving across the composition, which again, is similar to that. And then the opening, you know, as it moves to the right. So the same thing is happening here. So the same ideas play out in any composition. So you have to be aware that you know, although the idea of making pure abstract art to kind of get at uh, the purest uh, type of artistic expression really kind of eliminated a lot of the things that helped the art to have more visual um, appeal and I think make it more visually intriguing and also allows the artist to relate more to the world around them. And that is by introducing those elements, but with that underlying structure uh, that really conveys their feelings and emotions the same way as that Mondrian did, uh, but also allows for a certain more amount of uh, craft and, and skills to, to render those images and create a little more visual vitality for the, the, uh, the person seeing them. So in the end, uh, you know, these, every work of art is an abstraction, whether it's a photograph, um, film, it's all an abs abstraction of reality. And so, you know, for me, I, I, liked, I like to examine where um, Mondrian came from because he came from the ability to use those uh, underlying principles and elements of <clears throat> design. Uh, and then he actually refined them to the point of uh, eliminating all else, which was, you know, things that would relate back to the real world. So uh, to, to me, for me, some of his earlier paintings I thought were a little more exciting. Um, and some of his latter work became just a, a reworking of the same idea over and over. Uh, I think partly because it became famous for that style. So in the end, we have to look at composition as, uh, you know, you're taking chaos. You're taking what you see in the world around you. There's, there's just so much. And then honing down to what's important then how you organize them. So here we have some shapes that are randomly placed. Now you take the same shapes and you organize them in a way that makes meaningful sense. And it starts, uh, the composition has a lot more strength. You know, so if you take those same, that same idea and you apply it to this Degas painting, which is where those shapes actually came from, uh, you can see how you know, the underlying structure here uh, is this movement you know, around the form and bringing you to a focal point within the center of the painting. So everything kind of brings you to that point. Uh, everything's arranged. There's a lot of breaking up of patterns and everything, but the overall shape and structure is actually meant to actually bring you to a particular place in the composition and bring a focus on the most important elements and also just create a general feel of uh, visual movement and interest and rhythms within the composition. So, you know, that's the takeaway from this is uh, Whatever you're doing, you're organizing abstract um, forms into a composition that expresses something that you feel about uh, the images and forms that you're putting together. So it's about how you're going to pull them together. And, but there needs to be some underlying structure and, and the sense of the, these um, elements of design have to come together in a way that is meaningful. You know, so that's, that's the takeaway from this. Is, uh, how you comp compose things is important, that there is some underlying structure and that that structure helps to support your idea of what you want to be, what you want seen, the energy you want it to have, uh, the atmosphere you want to create, and the overall feeling and expression that you want to have in the end.